Hey, uh, welcome. This is Andrew, and today I'm bringing you another episode of Better Know an Archetype. We're going to be looking at some combo uh, archetypes, and specifically, uh, this in this episode, we're going to look at combos that revolve around a pretty simple mechanic, which is draw all your cards or draw draw a lot of cards, and then uh, and then forge uh, and and key cheat essentially so um there are some related combos that involve drawing a lot of cards but uh they're a little more niche and and just less they they are less common so um i'm really going to focus on the idea of draw a lot of cards and then uh key cheat now um really briefly i want to talk about combos in general because we haven't really addressed that as a as a concept um, when I say a combo, I mean a win condition that revolves around many cards working together, or at least multiple cards working together. And so uh, you might see, okay, this card is good, and this card is good, but when they're together, they do something really extraordinary. And, uh, and very often, combo decks are looking to... Uh, are looking to set up the combo and so you might generate some amber you might you know get through your deck but really the whole time you're thinking how do i find the how do i get to the cards that i need in order to execute my combo so with a rush deck for example you're trying to you know every card you're getting value out of and uh you want to play through your deck but you're just trying to generate amber as much as you can usually there's not a particular card that you just can't do without in a um, in a control deck too you're you're often you have a lot of tools you're using the tools that you get but you're not necessarily relying on oh this particular card for this moment uh, unless it's a very particular control strategy like oh I need I really need restring dentist but hopefully you have if you're trying to play control hopefully you have a card other than restring dentist that you're relying on um, and similar with steel, steel can be a little combo when you're trying to set up big steals with cards like uh, too much to protect an interdimensional graft. But oftentimes you're doing little, I'm, I'm stealing a little bit here, I'm stealing a little bit there throughout the course of the game. With combo decks, you are you really need to get these particular pieces and use them together to achieve your goal. So that's what I would say distinguishes it, uh, distinguishes combos from from other uh, from other game plans that just rely on a lot of good cards. So, and and in combo decks, we expect to have like a high synergy. We in decks of keyforge terms, right? Like we might see high arc. Arc is generally measuring the individual value of cards, but for a combo deck, we're probably going to see high synergy ratings as well because these these cards should work really well together. Should amplify each other all right so uh, i'm going to cover three different types of these combos that are draw everything and then key cheat and i'm going to start with uh one that doesn't work anymore because of errata but i still think it's worth covering and i kind of still hope they un it at some point but um it's okay if, if they don't but uh it, it's a fun combo and um yeah let's see so so this combo is what was called LANS, L-A-N-S, and uh, that stands for Library Access Nepenthe Seed, uh, L-A-N-S. And uh, that wasn't, that's not the only thing you need for the combo. So to search for this combo, I searched for Library Access, Nepenthe Seed, Phase Shift, and Key Charge. And th that's sort of the four cards that you really want to pull this off. Now, Library access and Nepenthe seed together get you one really nice thing, which is that you're going to draw your whole deck. And so first I'll talk about that mechanism, how that works. So library access is a card that says uh, play for the, it's an action that says play for the remainder of the turn. Each time you play another card, draw a card. Nepenthe seed is an artifact that has Omni sacrifice Nepenthe seed return a card from your discard pile to your hand. 
And the Omni in this ability is what really makes it work because uh, the, the whole goal of this combo is to play Nepenthe Seed to the board and then on a subsequent turn, play Library Access, use the Nepenthe Seed to return Library Access to your hand, play Library Access a second time, which draws you a single card as a result of playing the second library access. And now every card you play for the rest of the turn draw, will draw you two cards. So every time you play a card, you will draw two cards afterward. Um, if you combine this with cards that let you play more cards, and the two examples would be Wild Wormhole and Phase Shift, then uh, you can often you you can end up playing through uh, and and have no cards in your deck by the end to where you play a card and you play another card you're drawing the card that you just discarded so um, so yeah and at that point rule of six is going to kick in you're going to get to the point probably you end up at some point playing library access again now you're drawing three cards every time you play a card. Um, you're really getting through things fast now. Some of the cards that you're playing are generating Amber. Uh, and so if you just take that combo in a vacuum, you're going to end up with your whole deck in your hand, or almost your whole deck in your hand at the end, and a lot of Amber. Now, uh, this is the part that's errated, just to be clear. And the, um, the card that got errated is Library Access. Library access now says that you purge it. Uh, so it does still have the effect that it causes you to draw a card after you play a card for the rest of your turn. However, it, it then immediately purges itself. And uh, that completely removes the possibility that you might, uh, you know, that you can Nepenthe Seed it or get it back any other way. I'll throw in, uh, Nepenthe Seed was not the only way to get this combo to work. There were other ways to do it. For example, uh, Reverse Time was a way that, that this could be done, um, but a little less reliably. If you have the Nepenthe Seed there, it's guaranteed you can get this card back. If you have Reverse Time, you kind of have to hope that uh, that things come in the right order. And, um, you know, if you get this, if you get the, that combo, those two cards early, library access, reverse time, well, I drew library access, that's great. But if you don't get them earlier, if you don't have archives to set it up right, then it can be a little more sketchy. So dependency is the way to do it really reliably. Um, okay, so that's a rat it can't happen anymore. And the subsequent card, that, now I had originally hoped that they would errata it just by giving it alpha, um, which would mean that it could fire once and that's all uh, on a turn, but it wouldn't necessarily purge itself. They have printed a subsequent lookalike card in library card, which uh, has the same effect, but it's an artifact and the effect happens when you action it um, instead of when you, instead of when you play it from hand and then it still purges itself. So apparently the design team decided that purging it after use really was the right option. So I disagree, but that's okay. Um, all right. So that's the basic draw everything combo. And then uh, we have the other elements of making this a, you know, I can win the game in one turn combo are phase shift and key charge. Um, and so in this, uh, in that case, what you can see is that you use phase shift to play a key charge um, using all that amber you've accumulated to immediately forge a key. Uh, when you play the key charge, it causes you to draw the phase shift back into your hand because you've worked your way through your deck at this point. And then when you play it, the phase shift again, it's going to cause you to draw the key charge. And then when you play the key charge, it causes you to draw the phase shift and you can uh, forge, you could forge six keys that way theoretically. So um, that gets really crazy really fast. Now the one key component of it or key question anytime you're playing one of these uh, uh, lands one turn kill deck 
or lands OTK is that um, you have a question of, okay, am I able to generate enough amber? And so the nice thing though is you're already in Untamed, so you probably have cards like Dust Pixie and, um, and Hunting Witch, maybe even Fertility Chant to be able to generate a lot of amber, and so that probably isn't going to be a problem. Um, and we see a lot of these really high SAS versions of this have like Dust Pixie, Hunting Witch, etc. cetera. Um, and the, it's interesting to me, one of the reasons that the um, Keyforge developers cited for doing this errata is, and getting rid of library access uh, being able to re be replayed is not even necessarily that it was too good, but simply that uh it was too boring to watch <laughs> and and that's a pretty reasonable i mean it it is does take a long term to ex turn a long time to execute it um correctly and you have to track the rule of six across everything and it gets it gets pretty terrible so um yeah so that's that's that that is lands otk there are other versions you don't necessarily have to have the otk part um it's also possible that you could get it with, um, instead of key charge, you have key abduction. And if you've drawn all your cards into your hand, then key abduction doesn't care how much amber you have. And we're going to see some other key abduction uh, uh, forge for free stuff in a second, but uh, that can work with this as well. And there, there were good versions of that. So um, definitely possible. Uh, but this was the most common variant, the library access, the pent seed, phase shift, key charge. Um, some of these decks are still really good, even post errata, right? Um, and, and one of the interesting things about it is you, you're, if you're going to have phase shift, the pent seed, library access, you're going to have untamed. Um, whether you have other houses is, or what your third house is, is kind of an open question. Um, I suppose you could end up with a uh, like a Maverick Nepenthe seed and still pull this off. And if you have the reverse time, then you then all you need is logos and then a house to you know phase shift into. Well, so anyway, so that that but that's uh, this version of the draw everything and then forge combo. Um, it doesn't work anymore. Some of the decks that it, that used to work with it are still quite good anyway. Um, I recently opened one that has this whole setup, but isn't very good uh, without the combo. And even with the combo, I don't think it would be great. So uh, anyway, very interesting stuff there. All right, let's look at the next Draw Everything and Forge combo I want to talk about. This is also from Coda, and this is Battlefleet Key Abduction. And Linguini is a great example of this, but one of the beauties of this combo is that you really don't need you only need mars to have this combo you don't need to have any particular other house but i will say having tried to play a few decks uh even briefly owning one that that use this combo uh it is beneficial to have logos because logos helps you set up the combo better and that's often true for combos that logos will make them better uh regardless of what your combo is because it helps you save the cards up to be able to dump them all in a big mega turn that um you know that would be harder to pull off if you didn't have logos so the uh, linguini is a great example here that the strategy for this combo for the battlefleet key abduction combo is to have multiple copies of battlefleet um, I actually searched for three, but you can do this with two, especially if you have support like Nepenthe Seed. Um, but three makes it really good um, because sometimes you can get into a cycle. So Battlefleet says to reveal any number of Mars cards from your hand, and for each one you revealed that way, you draw a card. And so if you have a hand that is six Mars cards and one of them is Battlefleet, you are going to get to draw five cards. Drawing five cards is good. If you can then follow that up with uh, you know, another one, if you um, can depend the seed, then suddenly you will have drawn a lot of cards. Um, and then you fire key abduction. And so key abduction works here because it does give you an amber, but that usually isn't very relevant. Key abduction says to return each Mars creature to its owner's hand. That's 
rarely relevant for this. And then uh, you may forge a key up plus nine, the current cost, reduced by one for each card in your hand. So, um, so you need in a you know in a vacuum what you're going to be doing is forging for 15, but minus one for each card in your hand. And if you've drawn all your deck, or if you've drawn a good portion of your deck, then this essentially lets you forge at zero cost, which is good. Forging for zero is good. And so um, now I think the original intent of this card, as I imagine it, is something like you have a strong Mars board, and this lets you turn it into a cheap forge. Um, but cards like Battlefleet, and another one we'll get to in the next screen, uh, turn it into, yeah, this thing you can you can do even if you don't have a board state, as long as you have the right setup. Um, now, getting the right setup for this is a bit hard because uh, you're you're you know if you, let's say you draw a Battlefleet and two, two other Mars cards. Do you want to play the battle fleet and then draw two cards that that's not great value um but you kind of want to go mars so so you can at least get those cards out of your hand but then do you then do you just hold the battle fleet and chain yourself it's a little tough and that's where having strong archives really helps if you uh so this deck has linguini has mother um but also has lab work and um if you can start to set up uh, even Ganymede Archivist, if you can get it to fire, is really important here. If you can start to set it up that way, then you put yourself in a situation where, okay, I now have a battle fleet and a key abduction in my archives. Now I draw four Mars cards, and suddenly, oh, boom, I can pull my archives, and I have six, and I have a really good running start. And again, the Depend Seed is really helpful there as well. Um, yeah. It'd be pretty great to get this with like multiple lab works actually, or or even like a um, a library of the damned out of Dees, so that you could uh, there's one, so you can really set up a a crazy Mars turn. And the ideal situation here would actually be to not go Mars at all until you are ready to just launch the combo. And um, this Linguini can forge all three keys in one turn potentially, but um, even with other ones, it's possible to do that if you, you know, you end up turning the deck over and you, and you end up just drawing everything again. So, um, very strong, um, but a little harder to pull off here because you have to get the right hand mixture. And so it, it strongly benefits from having good archives. Um, all right. <laughs> now on to the notorious Jenka. Uh, which is a term we use to talk about Martian generosity key abduction. So this version of this combo of draw everything forged for free um, is really a bit crazy in comparison to the others because if you look at lands OTK, you need at least four cards to set it up. Um, you need library access, a way to recur the library access, either Nepenthe Seed or Reverse Time or maybe something else. But you need library access, a way to recur the library access, um, phase shift, and a key cheat. Uh, so that's that's kind of a tall order. Um, obviously, there are a lot of those decks, but that's, you know, you have to have these four pieces um, and you, you have to get them in the right order. Uh, with Battlefleet Key Abduction, you need at least one key abduction, you need at least two battle fleets, probably more. You're going to benefit from having a card like the Pent Seed. So very quickly you're getting into like, I have five or six cards that I want in the correct order. Genka doesn't care. It, it just needs two cards. Now one of them is a rare. The other is a an uncommon, but they're in the same house. And so there are a bunch of examples of it. Um, and sometimes you will get, you know, multiple copies of one or the other. So uh, this combo still relies on the key abduction for doing the forging, but for drawing everything, it relies on Martian Generosity. And uh, Martian Generosity is this rare that is an action. It has an amber, and it says lose all your amber, draw two cards for each amber lost. So... Um, and that two cards is what makes it really crazy because if you have six amber you play this you go up to seven 
you draw 14 cards. 14 is a lot of cards. And in fact, at that point, assuming you already had at least one other card in your hand, um, it's 15 you can forge with key abduction. So um, just really crazy, really fast here. Um, so yeah, so Martian Generosity is the is the engine here that draws all the cards into your hand, and then you key abduction. Now, if um, that this is kind of a one shot, the the thing that Battlefleet has on this is that Battlefleet lets you potentially get into a rolling cycle if you have enough Battlefleets. Martian Generosity can do it though if you have multiple Martian Generosities. And so some of these really high end versions of this have two Martian Generosities. And that is really crazy because what you do is you play the Martian Generosity, you draw your whole deck potentially, you play the Key Abduction, you forge for free. Now you play your other Martian Generosity, even if you had no Amber left over, you're going to draw two cards, which in this case is your other Martian Generosity and your Key Abduction. You Key Abduction again and you just keep doing it until you've won the game. And that is that is truly crazy. Now this deck has the benefit of also having the Gang or Not combo, which, um, which is a good way to generate Amber fast. So that's pretty cool. But, um, but it sure looks like it's going to rely on cycling Martian Generosity Key Abduction to close out a game. Um, Elder Hedgebet Haas is, um, has the distinction of being, I believe, still the deck with the uh, highest number of chains ever achieved, which is 21. And a big part of this is that if you if it get if it draws car the right cards, suddenly the chains stop mattering, right? If you at the point that you have started to fire Martian generosity. You just don't care how many chains you have because you have drawn your whole deck into your hand, and you you would even if you had no chains, you still wouldn't be drawing cards. So that um, that's pretty crazy. Um, one other thing I'll say that works. Uh, this also benefits a lot from having logo stuff where you can start to archive cards and tuck them away for later. Um, and I think some of the archive tools in AOA were actually better than in Coda. Um, so that could set it up really nicely. Uh, but there's a little bit of archiving that you can possibly get in Mars in the form of Glixel Proliferator. And Glixel Proliferator is really cool because it lets you take a card from your discard and put it back into your archive. So this is a way to um, put probably the Martian Generosity back into your archives on the same turn you played it, especially if you have a card like Mars First, especially if you have two Mars First, so you can Martian Generosity, Key Abduction, play the Proliferator, play Mars First, archive the Martian Generosity, play a second Mars First, archive the Key Abduction. It just gets really crazy. Now, you can't pull the archives right away. You have to wait until next turn, but you're sitting there knowing, okay, next turn I can do this again. Um, and that can just be really bonkers. So yeah, that is, um, that's Jenka, um, Martian Generosity Key Abduction. You'll also sometimes see it called MGKA, um, but Jenka I think is, you know, just rolls off the tongue. So I prefer that. There's a lot of good Jenka decks out there. Um, I'm gonna go over a couple. Um, these are ones I have a personal connection to. Uh, one is, um, EQ Che Kacha. Um, so this this one is a, a Martian Generosity Key Abduction deck that uh, that my friend Joe owns. But it has um, it has the Martian Gen. It has the Key Abduction. It also has uh, Mars Needs Amber, which can sometimes be a way to uh, slow steal from the opponent. It also has Hypno Beam, which is great for you know bringing problem creatures over to your side. Um, it has a, a pretty beefy Sanctum set up, and then it has two Nepenthe Seeds. So it's possible that you get into a situation where you can just Martian Gen, Key Abduction, Nepenthe Seed, Key Abduction, Nepenthe Seed, Key Abduction, and what in the world? So uh, why did they let that be printed? And, um, and additionally, these Dusk Witches can do a really good job of putting pressure. And so it kind of, it has this combo, but it doesn't, totally rely on the combo to do well. 
Um, my first Jenka deck that I ever owned that I personally opened is Haukea, uh, Honey Tower Lance Corporal. I do not own it anymore, um, but um, but it is uh, a really interesting Jenka deck that um, has, uh, it can't do any of these um, archive tucking tricks, and that I think is the big problem with it, but it's very interesting because it has the sting. And so it is possible uh, with this to with this deck to really ramp up the amber because of the sting, and then and then really reliably draw your whole deck with that Martian generosity pop, get a free key with key abduction, and then play a really nice set of um, you know control everything with these and um, do a bunch of good stuff with shadows. I think if it had it too much to protect, it would really be next level, but it doesn't, and that's okay. Uh, and I loved Merkins. Um, Merkins is, is really fun. So, um, anyway, this was just a really fun, fun deck, and I got this up to 13 chains, and then I got, uh, cocky and played it in chain bound at 13 and got it knocked back down to 12. Uh, <laughs> had a, had a bad day that day, but, um, but did manage to get it up to 13 originally. And then I'll go back here to this other deck I wanted to mention um, that I also have a personal connection to. This deck was um, originally owned by, I don't know um, who, yeah, I, this actually I think is probably my friend uh, from, from my local uh, meta in San Jose or in Santa Clara. And um, uh, he got this crazy uh lands otk deck that he would come and kick our butts with um and i struggled for a while to find a deck that could reliably beat it back in the early days but um the crazy thing is that it has this maverick dust pixie so it has two phase shifts so i guess it would be okay with having uh you know an untamed dust pixie anyway but it just sort of in my book adds insult to injury that it has this um <laughs> that it has this maverick dust pixie that it can just keep playing in in logos now it does in order to um in order to be able to replay it it has to have a way to kill it but it can do like phase shift lost in the woods which is actually really good right if you phase shift lost in the woods and put back the dust pixie and i don't know some other logos creature that's going to get you like four more draws later and two more amber so just really crazy has the hunting witches that that ramp that amber and then uh, and then, you know, ultimately three of those phase shifts need to go into playing key charge. Uh, so it's just crazy. Um, and it, it has some strong ability to like hold the opponent off too, right? With, uh, hypnotic command, deep probe is pretty annoying disruption. So, um, so it has some ways to kind of hold the opponent off while it's building up to this insane logos, uh, forge all the keys turn. So that's the affluent delegate of strength shuggle. Um, Robert, if you ever are getting rid of this, think of me. <laughs> um, anyway, so that's it. That's um, that's what I wanted to cover for this this particular type of combo, um, which is this idea of draw your whole deck and then you know play all the cards and forge keys for free. Um, hope you enjoyed. Hope it was helpful to you, and that you'll get out there and forge some keys. Oh, oh no, wait, I'm not done because I wanted to talk about how to stop these. Um, yes, sorry. <laughs> Um, if you want to stop, uh, this, these types of combos, it's, it's hard. Um, especially with one that has a very strong game plan. Um, library access and a pent seed, the, the easy, the typical way to get in and stop it was to, uh, be able to, to remote access their nepenthe seed early on. And, and if you could do that or just otherwise, not let them have access to the to the nepenthe seed you could really disrupt the combo um otherwise having other forms of control um you know control the weak um can hold them off for a turn uh shoving cards in their hand might clog them up and not let them get to the combo pieces they need there are things like that that can help but it's tough in worlds collide we started to get cards like um
uh, Bornit's touch, or, or Bornit if you could get a reap with it, to potentially find their combo pieces before they draw them and purge them. Uh, for some of the, if the combo wants to recur something, then Infernus or Creeping Oblivion could help, although these particular combos don't, aren't very susceptible to that because they draw everything and they usually either archive stuff or draw it back and it's it's really hard to hit them that way. So the Bornet's Touch is probably the, the more safer way to deal with them. Uh, punctuated Equilibrium is, is a really important card because if they're setting up the combo, and this Dysania would be the corollary where basically they're setting up the combo by either holding cards or archiving them. And if you can dump their hand or dump their archives, then that is really helpful. Obviously with PE, sometimes you can maybe help them draw it faster depending on how lucky or unlucky you are. So uh, there's some danger there, but but really with these particular combos, you need to not give them access to the cards that they need. Um, Etan's Jar is really uh, a really good card that came up in Mass Mutation for, for getting in the way of this stuff. Um, in... Uh, Oh, Merkins, always fun. Lateral shift. If you can, if you can end up playing their combo card so that it's gone, then that can be helpful as well. Uh, or you just rush them and and win before they can. But those are those are really the the ways that you could potentially do it. But it's it's tough. These things have strong game plans, and uh, if you often if you can't disrupt the game plan or just straight out out race them uh you're you're gonna kind of get um get hurt and i think that's another reason why i like control style decks and control play is that it gives me a chance against these kind of decks um where and i and i get a big kick out of that too if somebody brings one of these and is thinking aha i'm gonna auto win and i can say no you no you don't because i'm gonna you know, do blah 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 and stop you um, that for me, that's really fun, right? That, Hey, you thought you had a foolproof game plan. I threw a, you know, a wrench in your works that look at me, or sometimes it's, uh, no, they get around it anyway. And that suspense is pretty fun. So, um, but yeah, I think control disruption are really the, the options you have for, for, uh, beating these kinds of decks. Um, anyway, so that was the, uh, uh, Combo, intro to combos, and uh, spe specifically we covered the the archetype of draw a lot of cards, forge for free, um, or forge uh, with key cheats. Um, yeah, I hope it's helpful to you, and I hope that you will get out there and forge some keys. Thanks.